Hi, I'm Ian Johnston. In previous episodes, we've seen how leptospirosis can affect both humans and animals. As described in episode two, the clinical presentation of lepto in humans can range from flu-like symptoms to more severe cases where there is liver or kidney damage. In this episode, we'll look in more detail at how leptospirosis is diagnosed in both these groups. Waipokoro vet Richard Hilson, who we met in episode three, contracted lepto himself and says the key to his recovery was a quick diagnosis. I guess if it was a message I'd like people to take home from what happened to, to me, and I see it happen to other people, is to, is to not discount, you know, when you're really, really crook, um, don't call it man flu and head off to bed and walk around moaning and, you know, some, either get to the doctor and get, get seen to, uh, or if it's your partner that's really crook and in a bad state, then then really I think you know you've got to, we've got to put lepto front of mind. Think about that as an option um, because the long term effects are, are, are terrible. Animals, on the other hand, present in a slightly different manner to humans, as discussed in episode three. Depending on the cerevars contracted, animals may exhibit different symptoms, although lethargy and deaths are common. Let's hear again from Richard, who tells us how lepto is commonly diagnosed in animals. It would be very, very rare for anyone to ring up and say, I've got lethargic animals. What is it? They've, they've just about always got dead animals. So we've got a, you're straight out there onto post-mortem. Post-mortem looking for um, jaundice, red water. Um, so jaundice is a yellowing of the carcass. Um, it's, and it's really, really obvious when, as soon as an animal's opened up, you can't. You'd have to be some sort of colour blind to miss it, I think. And a lot of farmers will pick it up, so they kill a kill a dog tucker or something. Um, and red water, so the um, the urine on the bladder is is sort of port coloured. Often, um, especially in weathers or ram rams, you can see uh, red staining around the pizzle. Um, yeah, and the and the kidneys are just just black, usually just jet black, and they should be. A, nice deep purple colour if they were normal, but they're, they're in a bad state. We will take some some blood or some urine for, for testing to try and identify which cerevar it is. But again, it's it comes down to a timing thing. You, you can see it looks like lepto, you've got to act quick because you've got deaths. It also comes down to cost. Once any samples are collected, they're sent to laboratories for further testing. During this time, the person or animal will already be being treated with antibiotics. However, the lab tests allow for a confirmation of the disease. Ray Pearson from New Zealand Veterinary Pathology will briefly run us through how lepto is diagnosed in a commercial lab setting. NZVP is a diagnostic laboratory and we service veterinarians all around New Zealand. The main test still that everyone uses today is the serology MAT test, which is a microscopic agglutination test. And basically we are looking for antibodies. So the animal has been exposed to lepto and they've um, mounted an immune response. We test that in the laboratory and um, the other test that we have is a PCR test and that is done in a different laboratory. The MAT testing we do every day so it just depends on when the vet can get the sample to us and where it's coming from and then we test it the day that we receive it and then get the results out by the next day. How lepto is diagnosed depends on what phase the disease is in. Dr Fang Fang who studied lepto diagnosis and Dr Julie Collins Emerson from the Massey Epi Lab tells us more about diagnosing lepto in people and these different phases. Leptospirosis is divided into two phases of infection. The first one is the uh, Q phase infection, which usually lasts four to um, seven days. And during this period, leptospirosis um, can be present in high numbers uh, in humans' uh, body fluid, uh, for example, blood, and then followed by the second phase, which is the immune phase, and leptospirosis begin to be excreted in the urine, and also um, the antibodies begin to be appear. The most commonly used serological test for leptospirosis is the MAT test um, on human serum, and also some um, doctors issue a ELISA test, which is a screening test for leptospirosis, which can give a quick answer, however the specificity is kind of um, relatively low, so it should be confirmed by MET later. 
Matter is serologically based, so once a bacterium enters the body, the body will start to develop antibodies to the bacterium. The higher the number of antibodies in the blood, the higher the MAT teta. Uh, the early diagnosis is quite important for the patient management. As we can see, the diagnosis of leptospirosis is done by identifying the clinical symptoms, then confirming the disease with lab testing. Remember, if you suspect you may have contracted lepto, go to your doctor immediately and advise them of your circumstances. Thanks for watching and check out our website for further information.